Hello and welcome back. In this lecture, we are going to talk about two another important properties of a reactive form, which is value changes and state changes. So value changes and state changes are two events on a reactive form. So in this lecture, we are going to learn when these events gets fired and how we can listen to these events. The value changes is an event which is raised by angular forms whenever the value of the form control form group or form array changes. Let's try to understand it with an example. So in this form, we have several form controls. Now let's take example of this first name form control. So in this first name form control, when we will start typing something, every time the value in this first name form control will change, the value changes event will be raised on this first name form control. So for example, when I type A, the value has changed in the first name form control. So at this time, the value changes event will be raised on this first name form control. Again, if I type something else, again, the value changes event will be raised on this first name form control. And we can listen to this event and we can do something whenever this event happens. To listen to this event, let's go to VS Code and let's go to appcomponent.ts file. Let me close this no space allowed validator.ts file. And let me also close this app component.css file. All right. So inside this ng on init method, what we are going to do is after we have created this reactive form, what we want is we want to listen to value changes event on this first name form control. So first of all, we will have to get access to this first name form control. To do that, here we can simply say this dot reactive form, and on that we can call the get method. And to this get method, we can pass the property name as a string value. So here we want to listen value changes event on this first name control. So we will pass this property name to this get method. Okay. And it is going to return us the first name form control. And on this form control, we will have a property called value changes. Now this value changes property it is going to return an observable as you can see and we can subscribe to that observable using this subscribe method and now to this subscribe method we can pass a callback function and this callback function will be called every time the value inside this first name form control will change and we are going to receive the new value as an argument to this callback function so here let's call it as value now let's simply go ahead and let's log that value in the developer console. Okay, let's save the changes. Let's go back to the web page. Let me clear everything in this console. And now, as soon as the value inside this first name form control will change, for example, if I type A inside it, you will notice that that value has been logged. So basically, value changes event was raised. And when that event was raised, this callback function was called. And when this callback function was called, we are logging the value which we are going to receive for this value parameter. And what value we are receiving for this value parameter? The value which we have typed inside this first name form control. If I type something else, again, the value changes event will be raised and it will log the value which we have entered inside this first name form control. Okay, so as you can see, every time I type something inside this first name form control, it is raising the value changes event and Whenever the value changes event is raised, since we have subscribed to that event, that value is getting logged here. But if I type something in some other control, for example, in the last name control, at that time, you will not see that value changes event being raised because we are not listening to the value changes event on this last name form control. We are listening it on the first name form control. Now, just like we can listen to value changes event on a form control, we can also listen to value changes event on a form group. Let's see that in action. So let's go back to VS Code. And here, instead of listening on the first name form control, now we want to listen to value changes event on this form group. So we are assigning this form group to this reactive form property. So now we want to listen to value changes event on that form group. So for that, let's first access that form group. And that form group is present inside this reactive form property. And on that also, we can listen to value changes event. 
again this value changes event it is going to return an observable and we can subscribe to that observable and whenever the value will change on this form group it is going to call a callback function which we are passing to this subscribe method and there we are going to receive some data okay let's go ahead and let's log that data in the developer console now since we are listening to value changes event on a form group in that form group in any form control the value will change this callback function will be executed so if i go back to the web page let's clear the console and here you will notice that every time i type something in any one of these form controls so all these form controls belongs to reactive form form group so if in any form control the value will change the value changes event will be raised on that form group on the reactive form form group and since we are listening to that event on the reactive form form group the data will be logged in the console so for example if i type something here you see an object has been logged here and in that object we have the value for each of the controls so in the first name you can see this a is assigned if i enter something inside this last name then also the value changes event will be raised on that form control and in that case an object has been logged here so now you will see that for the first name a is there for the last name s is there if i type something in this street address again that object will be logged so every time the value of any one of these form controls changes it is going to emit the value changes event and you will see that every time we type something in any one of the form control it is logging some object okay so we can listen for the value changes event on a form control or on a form group or on an form array then we have another event called status changes so the status changes is an event which is raised by angular forms whenever angular calculates the validation status of a form control form group or form array now validation states can be valid invalid or pending and we can listen to this status changes event on a form control form group or form array let's understand status changes event with an example so let's say i want to listen for status changes event on this email form control so let's go back to vs code and again i'll comment this line here so in order to listen status changes event on the email form control first we need to get access to this email form control and we already know how to do that so first we will access this reactive form property on that we are going to call the get method to that we need to pass the property name in this case it is email so this expression here it is going to return us email form control on that email form control we will have the status changes property and again this status changes property it is also going to return an observable okay and it is going to return us the form control status and we can subscribe to that observable using the subscribe method now to this subscribe method let's pass a callback function and this callback function will be called every time the status of the form control changes here let's specify a parameter let's call it status and let's simply go ahead and let's log that status in the console let's save the changes let's go back to the web page let me clear everything and let me start typing something inside this email form control so let's say abc so you see the status is invalid every time i type something here every time the status is getting calculated okay so the status is invalid if i say at the rate gmail.com now it is a valid email so now the status has changed to valid so the status can be either valid invalid or it can also be pending let's use the status changes event on this username form control so that we will also see the pending status so let's go back to vs code and here instead of passing email let's pass username which is the form control name let's save the changes let's go back to the web page let's clear everything here so inside this username as soon as i start typing something let's say 
Manoj, you will see that current status is pending. And after five seconds, its status will change to valid because with this username, we don't have any user in this array, in this taken username array. So that's why it is valid. But if I type Manoj Ha, in that case, for five seconds, it will be in pending state. And after five seconds, it will be invalid because with this username, we have a username in this taken username array. So this is how we can listen to status changes event on a form control. And we can also listen to status changes event on a form group. So let's go back to VS code. And now let's listen to status changes event on a form group. Let me again comment this. And we are going to listen to status changes event on this reactive form form group. So here, let's say this dot reactive form dot status changes and the status changes. We know it is going to return an observable. So let's subscribe to that observable to this subscribe method. Let's pass a callback function. And inside this callback function, we are simply going to log the status of the form group. Okay. And let's pass a parameter here. Let's call it status. All right. Let's save the changes. Let's go back to the web page. Let's clear everything. Now, the status of the form group will be valid only if all its form controls has a valid value. And its status will be invalid if any one of the form control has an invalid value. And the status of the form group will be pending if any form control has a pending status. So for example, let me go ahead and let me type something inside this first name. So still you will see that the status of the form group is invalid because this last name is also a required field. Email is also a required field. And these two form controls has a status of invalid. That's why complete form group is invalid. Let me specify a name in the last name form control. Still it is invalid. Let's specify a value in the email. It is still invalid. And keep in mind that every time the value is changing, the status changes event is being raised. That's why you will see that this invalid is locked 23 times. Now just notice what happens. So as soon as I start typing inside this username, for example, let's say Manoj, you will see that the status of the form group is pending. And after five seconds, it is invalid. Okay, this form control, this username form control has a valid value. Because with this username, we don't have any user in the taken username array. So this form control value is valid. But in this form group, we have other required fields. For example, this street address. So let's enter some street address. Okay. Still, the status is invalid because this city is also a required field. Let's enter value for that. Then this postal code is also a required field. Let's enter some value for that. And this skills is also a required field. Let's enter some value for that. And now you will notice that the form group is valid. So when all the form controls in this form group has a valid value, after that only the form group is valid. So using the status changes property, we can get the validation state of a form control, a form group or a form array. So keep in mind that the status changes event, it is going to emit a string value. That value can be valid, invalid, or pending. And we can make use of these values in order to check if the form is valid or not. Let's see how we can do that. Let's go to VS Code. And there, I'm going to create a new property. Let's call this property maybe form status. It is going to be of type string. And initially, let's assign it with empty string. Now, what we are going to do is we are going to set this form status here. So we'll say this dot form status equals the value which we are going to receive for this status parameter. So for this status parameter, we will receive either valid if the form is valid, if all its form control has a valid value, or it will be invalid if any form control in this form group has an invalid value or it will be pending if the validation of any form control in this form group has a pending state. Okay, now let's go to appcomponent.html and there I'm going to use 
ng class directive and to this we are going to assign this form status property so again this form status will have a value either valid invalid or pending and based on that value what we want is we want to set a border color around this form around this section so now in the app component.css so on this form control we are also using this container class so let me copy this class name and in the app component.css here we will say dot container dot valid so if the section has this container css class as well as this valid css class so this valid css class will be added by this ng class directive if the form is valid so this form status will have a value either valid invalid or status so if the form status value is valid in that case on this section we will have this container css class as well as valid css class in that case we want to show a red border around that section so we are going to set the border and when it is valid we want to show a green border so i'll say green three pixel solid in the same way if the value of the form status is invalid in that case invalid css class will be added on that section so we will also check for that and in case of invalid we want to show red border around the section and finally we can also have a pending status in that case we want to show orange border with this let's save the changes let's go to the web page and let me start typing something so you see there is red border around the form that's because currently the form is invalid now when i start typing username you will notice that the orange border is there around the form and after five seconds it will again change to invalid right because not all the form controls has a valid value so the state of the form group will be invalid and in that case we are displaying the red border all right now let's enter value in each of the required fields some dummy value and now the form is valid and when the form is valid you can see a green border around that form so this is one simple use case where you can make use of the validation state of the form group and to get the validation state of the form group you can listen to status changes event on that form group this is all from this lecture if you have any questions then feel free to ask it thank you for listening and have a great day